7.30 is my motion to open science meeting. Motion to open, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are open. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a meeting of the Finance Committee. It's Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. Uh, before we start, I'd like to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so on tonight's agenda, we are going to finish up uh, voting on uh, budgets that we held last week. We're going to vote on all the articles. We're going to get an update from Mr. Kelly. Um, but before we do that, we're going to uh, take up some reserve fund transfers that need to be addressed. We'll go through them in order. Um, the first one is <coughs> from the police department, and it's in the, uh, the amount of $9,093.10. This is for the purchase of a, a fingerprint machine. I spoke to Chief Richmond about this, and the, what they're going to do with the purpose of having this separate machine is so when people come in to get fingerprinted, um, basically citizens, it's, it's so they can get their license um, to carry whatever they're looking to do. Uh, so they don't have to go into the back of the, uh, the police station in case they, they have somebody held in the, in the cell back there. Um, so there's less interaction that way. So there's gonna be two, basically two fingerprint machines. This, this one that they're gonna purchase is gonna be mainly for, for citizens coming in uh, looking to, uh, to uh, Exercise their Second Amendment right. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Also Chairman, the it's, uh, uh, there's been a substantial increase for applications for yes. LTCs. Yes. There's also uh, mm -hmm. in some increase for certain IDs. Uh, the, also, uh, the police could use it if they needed to in assistance with the school department. Or because, check, or check, yeah. Yep. yeah, as a backup. And so, and it would keep it out of the lockup area where uh, you wouldn't want someone to go back there and have someone throwing stuff from the cell or anything like that. Well, their their existing machine that they have right now is already like six or seven years old, mm -hmm. so this is uh, probably a, a good purchase. I'll make a motion. And, and their existing machine cannot be moved; it's built into the right. facility. That's right. Yep. I'll second. And we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, the next one is from Historical Commission, and this is in the amount of $2,400. And this is the, the Historical Commission is requesting a bench to be rebuilt on the corner of Perry Hill Road and Mendel Road, and the budget line does not have enough funds available. Mr. Do we have Chairman. any context on this? Yes. Uh, the Historical Commission originally embarked on this project thinking it was a volunteer project. They got wood uh, donated, uh, then had a craftsman uh, who put together, uh, had turned out it was the wrong wood, he had to get the right wood. He built the bench and the bench goes around a pump, is my understanding. And then he had to clear the area where the bench was going, disassemble the pump, which is an ancient pump, and not uh, damage it and then reassemble and put everything together. And he was of the assumption that he was going to be paid. The Historical Commission was of the assumption that it was uh, a donation. When they got the bill, they were shocked. Uh, they hadn't run it by anybody because they thought it was a donation. And rather than spend a great deal of time dealing with small claims court. I talked to the vendor a couple times. Uh, he would not bend, he would not decrease the amount. And uh, it's my advice that we use the reserve fund. I've talked to the individuals involved and
told them, please never again do that and mm -hmm. come to the miscommunication cost the yeah. town twenty five hundred bucks basically. It's not like maybe in writing gets that you know taken care of. I'll make a motion then. Second. All in favor? Guided. Okay. Okay, motion passes. Keep this way out. <coughs> Okay, the next uh, transfer is from our town clerk. Uh, it's in the amount of $3,229. Uh, let's see here. So there was, uh, let's see if I get this right. We have our town clerk here, so I better get it right. Uh, the shortage was due to a, um, a shortage of office staff from mid-September through the beginning of January due to a medical injury and surgery. Uh, this required a part-time staff member to cover additional hours to ensure proper coverage of customer traffic, phone call, and daily tasks. In addition, the medical absence came during the finalization period of the 2020 uh, decennial census. The remaining requested funding will be used by the two part-time employees to begin the work necessary to notify all voters of precinct changes and update all voters' records on file. Right now, there's a negative balance in that account. Um, is it $1,689? So it's basically to cover a temporary salary shortage. I make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. And the next one is also from the town clerk, the amount of $500. Uh, let's see. It's going to be used for archival boxes, request forms, and labels. So the purchase of labels, request forms, boxes for the archiving of fire department, town hall, and parting ways building records in the archival system. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Pam, for Thank coming you. in. in Thanks for coming in. We had any questions. <laughs> yeah. we are, we are, we're good. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Good night. Have a good night. Did you drop something? Did I? It's a leaf, I think. No, it's a leaf. Oh, you <laughs> stepped on the lower. Sorry about that. Sure. Uh, let me just sign off on this. So that's all taken care of. Um, so why don't we uh, go into our FY23 budget update uh, from uh, Mr. Kelly, our town administrator. Uh, Mr. Chairman, not to go back through the whole 72 days, <laughs> but as you know, we had to uh, cut an additional 150000 because of a change in the revenue estimates. Uh, and we also found $3,000 in differences because of bills that came in, one being Eunice and the other one being Gasby valuation. So that increased 3000 and so then we made the cuts. Uh, I've given the, I'll run through the cuts. It'll probably be redundant, some of them, because you've already been told about them. But I might as well go through them. And then also, what we did is we cut 75000 from the school budget, which, as you know, is a bottom line budget. But the way we were able to do that is uh, prepay tuition for, by 75000 it's a one-time fix. Uh, the monies that were increased were uh, town accountant, the Gasby valuation line from 5,000 to 6,500, and I'll give your clerk a list of this. The technology 
uh, software maintenance from 60,000 to 61,500. Uh, we as the budget decreases, we decrease miscellaneous compensated balances from 15 to 10,000 because of the fact that we provided for monies in the uh, uh, stabilization fund. I'm sorry, I drew a blank. Uh, Lack of sleep will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> accountant, uh, we zeroed out the longevity payment. Uh, treasurer collector, we went from the salaries of the treasurer collector, 65000 to sixty, uh, uh, and fifty to uh, sixty-nine fifty, a cut of $4,050. Fire chief salary went from 121,904 to 105, 56,182, and the salaries call firefighters to 55,080. Salaries and part time EMTs, 161,592 to 158,424. The chief had put 2% COLA increase in those line items. So we backed them out because there have been no s settled colas across the board in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, salaries dispatched, the police chief uh, went from 260, 256 to 208, 205. That's the position he was asking for. We cut it. The uh, recycling CMAS. 156 to 131 thousands. That was a uh, in consultation with DPW. Forestry went from 17.5 to 1600. Uh, just making a way to come down. Health and dental went from 1,647 to 1 million. 602 and uh, so all of the reductions resulted in a budget that is 33,320,718. Our revenue is Thirty-three thousand four hundred and five oh nine one. You've got both the revenue and the budget uh, recap sheets mm -hmm. in the warrant handout that I've given. So we've got approximately an eighty thousand dollar cushion. That's not much of a cushion considering that the revenues were estimates, but it's uh, as good as we could do without cutting bulb. That's something. That's yep. better than being uh, in the negative. So. And uh, I'm very confident that going forward, we will, uh, uh, I know that the House has increased Chapter 70. I haven't seen how much because they haven't published it yet. UGGA uh, the figures I think might be static and uh, there are some other increases in specialized state accounts like the circuit breaker that type of thing so hopefully we will get to the 75 to 125 that MMA was predicting and that it, with the cushion that would give us a pretty well close to two hundred thousand dollars that in case one of the estimates went awry we're all set make up the difference yeah and i'll be glad to go through the budget on the uh, art, uh ones that i would ask that when you vote on the complete budget if the motion include the changes we made to get down uh, that I read, and you can just reference that, and 
uh, your clerk will have the list so it can go in the motion. Are we going to go through it? We're going to have to go through every budget that only the, the ones you held. held. Only the, the ones you held. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go through the ones that we held first, and then, and then we're going to go <coughs> through the warrant. The warrant. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Kelly's going to read through that, and then we'll make we'll make a motion. Okay. I, I thought you were asking us to go through all the budgets that you depleted. Oh no, no. And all those to go the back. only the ones you held. Okay. Good. Right, and. So uh, uh, We'll also discuss free cash when we get to the warrant. Okay. Okay. So, so my list here. First one was thirteen police. That was the first one we held. Yeah, okay. I notated on this recap sheet okay. a couple of weeks ago which ones we were skipping. All right, so let's go to number 13, police, and let's. this will have to reflect the updated number because we may have the old number on here. So, Mr. Kelly, what Actually, is Mr. Chairman, the you can see that uh, our, as far as the Board of Selectmen approved budget, the number that took the dispatch out uh, is now 208-205, so that is the correct number for salaries and the correct number for expenses. It went from uh, 260-256 down to 208-205. The third line down. Mm -hmm. So are we? So, all right. So what is the bottom total? What's the total? The salary total is two million two hundred ninety-eight thousand five hundred. The expense total is three hundred sixty-one thousand five ten. For two million six hundred and sixty thousand and ten dollars. I'll make a motion for two million six hundred and sixty thousand and ten dollars. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Since there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the police uh, police department budget is passed unanimously. Next one I had that we held was Old Colony, Bristol Agriculture, and Christian Schools combined. Okay, that's 19. Yeah. The Old Colony Regional is 2,282,455. That's no change from where we that's, had. That's, right. what we, yeah, that's what we already had. Yep. Yep. And no changes to Bristol Aggie. No changes to Bristol Aggie. So that, that was 146, 506. And uh, I would suggest that the breakout was given to you at my direction here so you could see the tuitions, you could see Bristol Aggie, you could see the actual budget that the school district has control over, but that the uh, bottom line for the Akushnet Public Schools is 15,842,118. I'll repeat it. 18 million, I mean, I'm sorry, 15,842,118. That includes tuition, the Cushion of Public Schools, Bristol Aggie, and the debt payments. And if I, uh, that includes the $75,000 that the school allowed us to cut and 
from the prepayment of the tuition. And I think we'll do the breakdowns next year so we can actually do a comparison. But that would be great. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's better for you folks to see it and actually see the mm -hmm. uh, tuition charges, see the Bristol Aggie charges, and actually see the expenses and salaries in the school department itself. Mm -hmm. It's more transparency for this committee. Well, I know Old Colony also gives us the number of students. Uh, it'd be nice to have that information from the other ones too, just to get a comparison. For the tuition the especially. Yeah. The tuition is a uh, formula set by De DESI. It's uh, the school choice amount, and I, would, I hope I get this right, times 3% times 90%. If it's not, then it's times 9% times 3%, but I think the 3% comes first. If you're multiplying, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> but it's, uh, uh, it's something they do not have control over. I'm just curious, my own, I to see what it costs. When they do their presentation, they, they gave the numbers. Students. They did. Yeah. They yeah, gave the breakdown. And I, I was very appreciative that the school committee and the superintendent worked with us on this to get this down. So do we have uh, do we have a motion, to, motion. to approve uh, Old Colony's budget as stated? As Second. well as, um, so we're gonna do those separate then? Right. All right. I'll second Old Colony as stated. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll call his budget has passed unanimously. Um, now, do we have a motion to approve a Cushnet School Department budget of fifteen million eight hundred forty-two thousand one hundred eighteen dollars? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Since there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, the school budget has passed unanimously. Mr. Chairman, just for discussion purposes for so your committee, uh, the total budget was 33,320,718. The amount for education was 18,124,573. Okay. So that's a little more than 50% of the yeah. budget. Of the, and that the does not include the joint accounts. When you say the joint accounts, are you talking the... The non-departmental, the insurance, uh, the pension, which for them means a support staff pension, not because the teachers have their own pension system through the state. How are they doing on contract? They, uh, They're not finished. None of our contracts are finished. None of the school contracts are finished. Okay, the next budget that we held was DPW Highway. Mm -hmm. Yes, number 20. Do we have an update on that one, Mr. Kelly? There are no changes from the Board of Selectmen budget. So the total of 952.807 stands? Correct. I make, make a motion. motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? There's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 The DPW Highway Department budget has passed unanimously. Next one I have that we skipped was library. Library. Yep. Okay. Twenty-five. <coughs> okay, Mr. Kelly, do we have an updated number on that budget? There are no changes from the Board of Selectmen budget from the administrator. So if I read this correct, it's for the, the amount of 287779 Correct. Do we have a motion on motion. the library's budget? We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Since there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 So the library's budget passes unanimously. 
I never marked anything down for a school debt principal or interest. I don't think that was anything that we had to review or so the and next ones that I had thirty was thirty, water enterprise and sewer enterprise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any changes to that, Mr. Kelly? Uh, the changes have been uh, reflecting the uh, the uh, increase. New, new Bedford increase for water. The bottom line is one million nine hundred and eleven two four seven. Yeah, so it's on the next page. And it's actually the same amount. That hasn't that, that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. So that's water. I'll make a motion to accept water. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the uh, water department budget has passed unanimously. Sewer has changed. So now we're on to sewer. The bottom line now for sewer is seven ninety nine nine seven nine, and that reflects the changes in the rates. Okay. It's about a forty nine thousand dollar change. Correct. Make a motion. I'll second. Is that a, a new contract we have now? Was it was it better? That's the new the new rate new rates from New Bedford. We the change in the water we were able to eat. negotiate the sewer also the sewer and water all together. Yeah, and the sewer uh, it's mainly the increases due to the fact that they're uh, been installing all the new meters and everything. Okay, and they're capturing uh, things they never captured in the past. Just, uh, just an FYI to any new residents at Cushionet that may be watching our, our meeting. Um, in the town of Cushionet, we have to purchase our water from New Bedford. Uh, some people may not realize that, but that's that's how it goes. Even though you have wells in the northern part of the town. Mm -hmm. The town has spent a lot of money researching to find out where we could get water in the town and never come to a come to, uh, they spend a lot of money in another, mm -hmm. another Well, it's at some point, uh, if you read the Wall Street Journal, they say that water is going to be the new oil. So the fact that you actually have a source in town for the future might be an advantage. Yeah, I'm going to keep it safe, too. Okay, so we have an amount of 799979 I make a motion. I'll second. All, uh, any discussion? Since there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The uh, sewer budget passes unanimously. That was the last line item we held. We, uh, we voted on golf, right? Yes. Okay. okay. I would suggest uh, when we go through the warrant, I'll have some other uh, comments about the budget, but. We can we can look at the bottom line and some of the yeah, various groupings like general government, public safety, and you can look at that. And I included that in the bottom of the recap sheet. Okay, so Mr. Kelly, I believe we're going to be working off of this packet now, correct? Correct. The uh, first page is actual first page is the revenue sheet that you've seen before. I just cleaned it up. This one. Yep. Yeah, so Bob, we're, we'll yeah. be working yep. off, off of this and then, and then this packet right here. Okay. As far as the actual uh, annual town meeting warrant. Article 1 is the typical acceptance of reports. Article 2 is, uh, I've just, it's a hold as far as the amount of money until we know, right now it's 86,000 
for snow and ice and change, I will probably be looking at article, past articles for the funding source. So you say Article 2 is 86000 Yeah, I'll get you the final figure when all the bills come in. Because here it says 115 I know, that was the uh, placeholder. Okay, Yeah. thank we, you. We'll typically know that. Um, at by town meeting. By town meeting. It's, uh, once we pay all the vendors, a couple of them have, we're waiting for their insurance uh, records to come in so we can actually cut the checks. Got it. Thank and you. it'll be about 86 and change. Yeah, just for uh, Eric and Pete, some of the some of these numbers that might be on here will uh, be finalized the day of. Well, this one will be finalized when we print it. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know sometimes we don't get everything right. right. And sometimes we're up until the day of where a number you may change. Before the meeting. Right. Uh, uh, the next article. Uh, right now, I have no past years. It's a placeholder for past year bills. If uh, by the printing, if nothing comes in, that article will be removed. But I, for safety's sake, I'd rather leave it in. Mm -hmm. You never know that ten thousand dollar bill will come sneaking out of somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from somebody who was supposed to do a, a park bench for. Uh, yeah, so I was just going to say, 25 euros, 25 euros. I think you're going to use that example for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going yeah, to thank you for it. I want something I, about a tower for I'm gonna, you. I want to go that? sit on that hey, hey, and take hey. a picture <laughs> to get my money's worth. <laughs> my taxpayer money worth on that one. Now you have your consent agenda. Uh, I'm meeting with the town clerk and the moderator on Friday morning. Uh, as you know, a consent agenda, unless someone objects to one of the articles, there is one vote for the whole consent agenda. And you just move it through town meeting. And as you can see, it's the typical. It's a PEG access cable related fund, which hasn't changed, I've been told, in a while. It's the authorization to apply for state and federal grants. Article 5, Article 6 is your Chapter 90 authorization. Article 7 is the consent to an anticipation of revenue to, uh, if you need to, to borrow for less than a year, it would be a ban. Uh, Article 8 is your cemetery board uh, allowing folks to work. Article 9 is the Recreation Commission. Article 10 is allowing the library to sell discarded books for a dollar. Article 11 is your revolving funds and the typical setting of the maximum amount expendable. The only change for this from past years is last year you instituted a recycling a revolving fund with, uh, but the amount hasn't changed as far as the cap. It was just that it was a separate article last year. So that, that would be your consent agenda. The next section in the warrant is reserve accounts. Uh, we, as you know, or Free cash was certified at one million six hundred forty-one thousand one hundred sixty-six. Uh, we went back be, just to make sure with DOR because at one point they were looking at about a million four, a little short of a million four. But then when everybody crunched the numbers together, and the finance department did their wonders. We had 1,641,000 certified. We'll take it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Kelly, before you move on, I just wanted to uh, do another FYI out there for any new residents that might be watching um, and wondering about what is free cash uh, and, what it's, and what it's used for. Um, free you know, cash is not free. It's a misnomer. <laughs> There's no free money. Um, 
So this, these funds are not used to fund an operating budget. Um, they're only used for capital expenditures. Um, so we cannot use this to fund police department, fire, etc., schools. Um, it is only used for uh, capital expenditures such as a dump truck, uh, things of that nature. It's you, it, it can be used for capital expenditures. It can be used if you have a judgment against the town for certain programs when you're instituting the program. Uh, it can be used for uh, both hardware and software purchases. It can be put into savings accounts, which we're doing here for yes. future years. Free cash actually is cash that has not been assigned in one fiscal year, you skip a fiscal year, and then you have that cash that from two years ago has cleared and hasn't been used, then you have the opportunity to assign it that second fiscal year out. And uh, a lot of times it's, uh, can fluctuate anywhere from in a town this size from half a million to two million. It all depends on the year and how bad the winter was, how, <laughs> uh, uh, whether you've exhausted your reserve fund, uh, a number of issues. But the, uh, the Department of Revenue would always frown upon using free cash to fund an operating you, budget. You can't, if you use it to operate uh, on an operating budget, not only would DOR frown on it, the bond rating houses would uh, scalp you. They would really go after you heavy. Uh, your rates would, you'd probably go, to, if you did it two, three years in a row, your rates would go substantially down. It's, uh, it's very much a, uh, uh, it's encouraged to use it for one-time costs. Uh, there are a couple communities I know that consistently use it for operating budgets, uh, but they are uh, dinged on their bond rating. Understood. Well, it, even, it, it makes the case for being more fiscally responsible and prudent with our departmental budgets. Uh, well, it actually also, if you use it for an operating budget, they th the DOR especially thinks that you're artificially inflating uh, your taxes. So then you're subject to an audit. Oh, multiple ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the reserve accounts, we establish a health insurance stabilization fund that is uh, going to put some money away to help us go uh, so mitigate the these uh, spikes in health insurance. We're going to go out in an RFP, but just knowing our history and the fact we're petitioning to join a group will probably come in at a little higher rate than we would if we were two or three years in the group. But this will help us through. And as you all know, stabilization funds are like bank accounts. If you don't spend it, it stays there, mm -hmm. and you can spend it in future years. Yep. Uh, we also established a uh, reserve uh, stabilization fund for accrued liabilities for compensated absences, payments in uh, f future fiscal years. It's when people leave and you owe them under the collective bargaining agreements money you won't have to take it out of your operating budget and you can eventually phase out in the operating budget that line item for compensated balances. We left it this year because you actually have to go and get the money out of the account 
and so you wouldn't be able to do it until the fall town meeting. And if someone left prior to that, that's why we left some money in that account. And I would advise uh, the FinCom consider doing that, you know, a minor amount, five to 10,000 every year, just to get you through till the fall town meeting, if you need anything. Uh, I don't think the town will be faced <coughs> with a lot, but the school might be, and they might need assistance because the, uh, there's a bill pending before the legislature that's a five plus five early retirement bill well, that, allow will take it. that allows folks to buy five years of time and five years of age. <clears throat> the town would have to accept, vote to accept the provisions of the act, but in the long run, since you're top heavy as far as teachers that are at the top of the scale and the top uh, of experience, that you might lose a number of them and then you'd have to recruit in the middle of the scale. The problem is it's not like in the past where you recruited and you could recruit teachers that have bachelors. Now you have to recruit teachers who have masters. There are no new teachers with bachelors. And so you've got a recruitment <coughs> retention problem coming down the pike, but I've sat with the school committee and the superintendent discussing it and we're looking at options to make sure that it doesn't become a budget buster. And that was 50,000 in that account. 200,000 in the insurance one, 50,000 in that one. I've also uh, <coughs> proposed a stormwater management operations cost for complying with MS4 and uh, of 50,000 to begin that to make sure as you go along because more and more you're going to be hit with costs for inspections. You have gotta make sure your stormwater system and your sewer system don't in intermingle. That means in dry seasons, you're gonna be sending cameras down those pipes to inspect <coughs> and that costs money. Yep. And you might as well start to save for that and s keep up with what DPW and your stormwater agent is doing now so you don't have the state and the feds come in and mandate it because when that happens, instead of a $50,000 price tag, it'll jump to hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And they control it. Your general stabilization fund. I'm recommending $160,000. That is not typical for you folks in the past. You have put more money in, but the bond rating houses look at unrestricted general stabilization as you should have a minimum of four and combined with your overlay surplus no more than a maximum of 15% of your projected revenues. Right now you're at about 10.05% when you add the 160. So you're right at the ceiling. Each year you just keep it at that ceiling and you're, it'll help your bond rating substantially. And in past years, the general fund was what we used for everything. Now we're getting separate funds for it, so. And they don't count towards the cap. Correct. It's only the unrestricted funds count towards the cap. As soon as you put the restriction in, 
it removes it from the cap and you can put as much as you want in that account. Is there any restrictions to the number of uh, reserve accounts that town holds? Uh, there are some things you can't have a reserve. <laughs> create one for, but since other than uh, the health insurance cost and the uh, <coughs> buyout, almost everything else you see will be different types of infrastructure. And it's a good way to put money away and start to make a long-term plan because for example, your Chapter 90 money hasn't really changed in a number of years. Mm -hmm. So you get to do a certain number of roads. If you have a major project you want to do, you can access, for example, the stormwater one to take care of the stormwater improvements under, let's say, South Main Street the infrastructure to take care of the sewer and water pipes. Now these reserve fund accounts, um, they're invested. They, uh, to, to get money out of those accounts once it goes in, is it like the general stabilization account where it's got to go to town meeting? And it's a super majority vote. But it has to go to town meeting yes. to do it. The selectmen can't do it. No. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> That's why it's good for long-term planning of infrastructure projects and the like. As long as people understand that it <coughs> it's money it goes in and they, they have to vote to let the money go out. Yes. Yeah. Was it a three-quarter vote? Two-thirds. General, general majority. It's a super majority, two-thirds. Yeah, I think this uh, the creation of this... Um, you know, with your guidance, I think it's been really, it's a really great idea. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. To have these separate stabilization accounts. I can um, see this being a huge save, savior for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, and so in, the, in these accounts, uh, what can grow? Um, Interest. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're, we're looking at that next because some of your accounts uh, were negligible. Don't get <laughs> and that's, Maybe the next 72 days in the project. <laughs> yeah, make sure they're properly invested. Yeah, and uh, not to, some of them had a, uh, you've got interest up and, in, which is almost back end too, you got an interest up to a certain amount. And then anything above that amount you weren't receiving interest on. Yeah, I know. Uh, 250000 go. I'm advising go into the capital expense, the infrastructure stabilization. Mm -hmm. I'm going to verify the figures in these uh, explanations below before town meeting. We'll probably be verifying this week to make sure we get up to date exact amounts. But those are the approximate amounts. And then OPEP, I'm recommending you put four hundred thousand dollars in. I know in the past people have questioned that, but your latest town audit states your OPEP liability is twenty one million six hundred and fifty three thousand two hundred and ninety seven. If you put the four hundred thousand in, your OPEP trust account will be 932,648 and 58 cents because it's invested through this uh, pooled state OPEB. Mm -hmm. This is another one of those 10% 10, 10 where the uh, bond houses like to see that you have so between 5 and 10 percent minimum, they'd like to see you fund it fully, but now they're starting to put targets on it. And so you're getting very close. To, we uh, tried different things with this. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, we, we tried the tax, right? Went to a vote and it got shot down at town meeting where they wanted the restaurants to add a, a tax, and a food tax. And 
this has been an issue. Free cash is the best way to do this and to build it up at some point. At, as you build it up, you're going to get, and the auditors are going to have to be very helpful with this, you're going to get to a tipping point where you should then consider contributing, but contributing less because it all depends on your liability. And as your retiree population change, mm -hmm. then your liability changes. Right, so uh, for the folks out there watching, OPEB stands for Other Post-Employee Benefits. Right. So when we have a uh, municipal retiree uh, or employee retire, um, we are liable for some of their post-retirement benefits, correct? Uh, you've got two major groups. You've got the groups that are eligible for Medicare mm -hmm. and the group that's not eligible for Medicare, which is composed of two groups. One is of the people never contributed to Medicare, and those are getting very far between, very few and far between, because after a certain date, everybody had to contribute to Medicare. There are some retirees that are still in that group. And then you have the group that are not yet 65, whether it's teacher that have retired early or police and fire. And so then you're liable for the town share of their health insurance. And they're liable through their retirement payments for their share. Once you get past the Medicare age and you're a retiree, then it's just the wraparound policy, the additional policy, which is a lot cheaper. Now we get into uh, the budget. And you can see that I've set it up a slightly different than you've had in the past. In the past, you've had the expense total and the salary total. I included department totals, showed the previous year, the department request, and then I took the liberty of doing it as your recommendation, assuming that you would have adopted everything. Mm -hmm. The changes are in there, and it is divided up. The percentages, uh, I've got to rework for the, uh, because of that ref was prior to the changes on the general government total, the education total, et cetera. I can give them to you at the end of this. But if you look at the last page, it shows you the changes and your general fund total change is about three and a half percent. And that includes the huge spike of 5.62% in the insurances and pension. And as I said, 33,327,18, which is below the revenue estimates. So we've got a balanced budget. Yeah. Uh, Article 19 is the golf club enterprise. Article 20 is the sewer. And then we get to the uh, capital pro uh, amounts. And as you can see, you've seen most of these requests that are in black. ones that are in red are the C CPC funds. Most of uh, the requests are coming out of free cash, 
other than the breathing apparatus, we're still waiting to hear from the grant. Otherwise, it'll come out of the ambulance, ambulance receipt fund. Just for the committee's edification, as far as the stabilization accounts, <coughs> it was 1,110,000 went into the stabilization accounts. So that leaves us about 500,000 in free cash. 330, 410, and this almost wipes it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave free cash hanging around. Yep. Because if they see you carrying it year to year, they get suspicious that you're not putting it in a stabilization account and you're leaving it out there. Uh, the only two items other than the items listed here are the software for the assessors and the uh, senior work off. 20,000 for the senior work off, 8,000 for the software for the assessors. And that funding comes out of where? Free cash. And uh, out. Uh, Free cash was one million six hundred forty-one thousand one hundred sixty-six, and between these items, the senior work off the assessors and the stabilization accounts, one million six hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred was spent. I didn't have anyone come in and ask for eighteen hundred dollars for something. <laughs> I'm sure there's another bench somewhere we can do. It. Oh God! So, uh, <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> he teed it up. I could not. Okay. There also, <laughs> what uh, there's an article you'll see in red that <laughs> might be removed because 23. the golf mm -hmm. committee wanted to talk to CPC about some funds for. Uh, parking lot or uh, trails at the golf club, but until CPC meets and the two groups get together, if they don't, by the time this is printed, that article is going to be removed. Okay. When does this have to go to print? Uh, I believe the 22nd or 3rd. In a week or so. Yeah, they've got a week. Are there any questions about the uh, free cash capitalites? The uh, Article 25 is called the Mullen Article. It, uh, chapter 39, Section 23D is the Mullen section. What it does is it allows, and I'm going to use an example, the planning board. If the planning board is having four hearings on one, special, one specific special permit, and a member misses one meeting but attends the other three, and he is able or she to view the video or read all the uh, presented items, read the minutes, then this would allow that person to vote on the special permit. This would be after the fact of the presentation. They'd hold the vote? Yeah, but you're not allowed to meet, miss a number of meetings. And, and you're not allowed to do it if you miss a single meeting that is the whole time that it's presented, the public hearing is pending. Uh, legislature in their uh, view established this. Most, com most communities have adopted it. Uh, a lot of communities adopted it during COVID, plus the remote participation. Right. 
uh, it's advisable. Not that oh, this applies. I'm sorry. I think this is uh, you know, potentially helpful for, let's say, a committee such as ours, where sometimes we struggle to have a quorum. Hmm. You know, and that becomes an issue. It's especially for the adjudicatory ones because you do not want a number of like planning board, board of appeals, or whatever to not end up with enough members having been present at all of the hearings to vote. So the application goes through by default. So you can't add your orders of condition or anything. Not that this applies to this committee, but uh, does this uh, Mullen Act also <coughs> apply for executive? If you met, meet, if you miss an executive meeting within your board, I like mean, an executive session. Uh, yeah, if, uh, one of the boards uh, having a meeting in executive session that they yeah, have to have recorded a though. What's that? That's mm -hmm. not recorded. It's not recorded. There's nothing for you to review. Well, actually, yes, the minutes are recorded. Okay, so just in so reviewing the minutes. the minutes and reviewing okay. any items presented. Let's say uh, you're in executive session and you're considering uh, a number of bids that came in. Mm -hmm. uh, whether before you go out and uh, do a contract, you're negotiating a contract with the number one bidder. And uh, somebody, it takes more than one meeting and someone misses one meeting but can come up to speed, they could vote on that. Good. <coughs> Mr. Kelly, um, so right now we've gone through, what, 25 of the articles? Yeah. And the so rest are zoning. Zoning, right? So um, I'm thinking maybe we should take a vote on 1 through 25 at this point and then maybe do each zoning article okay. individually a and I would suggest that uh, you allow us to uh, remove the articles the articles that I suggested okay. if we have nothing to put in them okay uh, so we'll have to make a motion to that I'll make a motion that we accept uh, Article 1 through 25 as presented with the exclusions that may be needed. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on Articles 1 through 25? There's no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Articles 1 through 25 have passed unanimously. So and, we're be and, the and that that just so the clerk can note if we remove articles the numbers will change yes I mean there's only one that goes on financial maybe no but sometimes the zoning bylaw could have a financial impact on the town mm -hmm. so I think it's a good idea that we have a knowledge base of these things uh, anyway uh, also, just so the board knows, it's uh, next week the Board of Selectmen is, pro is going to meet to most likely sign the warrant. We're, we're, we're we have to get it printed. Yeah, so we're, we're on a fast track. track. <laughs> yeah, we're out of time. The, uh, the, the Stables, yeah. Stables is open 24 hours or one. No, the actually, I've been, told, <laughs> I've been told the printer can uh, do a turnaround in 36 hours. Then it's got to be posted, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the big thing. That's, it's got to yeah. be posted everywhere. Yeah. So, with some, uh, so obviously, some of these next upcoming bylaw articles are very lengthy. Um, so, if you want to give us like a, a summation as best yep. you can okay. on each article, the cleft notes, <laughs> if you will. Yep. Some, of, some, some of them I cannot give you an explanation other than. Uh, I know that, and some of them, for some of them, the hearings are still pending. Well, and, so, and sometimes what's happened in years past is information has changed on the fly at, at yeah. the day of the meeting, or something new has been 
uh, a new, re new re revelation, and then you may have voted one way and be like, hey, wait a minute, I don't agree, agree with this now. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes well, that happens too. The first article is a uh, moratorium on the installation of uh, large solar arrays, ground mounted. So it's not the ones on top of people's houses. And it's 180 days to get allowed the planning, stormwater, conservation, et cetera, uh, groups to get their act together with the regulations so we can make sure that they're done right and there's that the green installations do not have negative impact <laughs> on the oh. on the environment. So, yeah, so you don't have some group saying, all right, I want to abut this right in the back of uh, Mr. Benoit's uh, backyard here. Uh, well, so he's looking at a bunch of solar panels all day long. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. I mean, that area is prone to vandalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's, uh, well, it's funny. Uh, what was it? Route uh, 44, the ones along there, and mm -hmm. is it Middleborough? Along the state highway, someone stole the, <laughs> the panels. <laughs> stole all the panels? Huh? They stole the panels that were installed along the state highway. <laughs> I guess that, I guess that patrol didn't patrol that night. But, uh, this sounds, this sounds like a but this would ensure that the proper setbacks, the yeah. vegetative screens, mm -hmm. the to make sure that there's, for example, gravel underneath so you don't have washouts, all of those type of things. water management and stuff, yeah. <coughs> and it just, it gives them till fall town meeting to come up with what they need to do to present to the town if they need to update the bylaw or regulations, et cetera. Sounds like a sensible article. Uh, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No discussion. All in favor of Article 26? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion passes. The next article, I, I put the verbiage in Article 27, but this is the article. When I tried to put the map in, the map superimposed on top of the verbiage and you couldn't read it. So I have our IT specialist and our uh, town planner working on how they're going to make sure this prints right. But what it in effect does is kind of r fixes a jog in the zoning map. It changes the two <coughs> lots in green into from residential A to residential village zoning so that the line will be more direct when you look at it going straight down the uh, amber or whatever my wife tells orange for lack of a better term peach color so it'll join that zone my wife tells me i don't know colors and i agree because i'm somewhat colorblind <laughs> and it's the selectmen and the planning board and everybody are looking to get it done it makes sense it also uh, helps with that neighborhood in making sure that on one side of the street there is one type of development and on the other side of the street there is totally different. That was my question. My question was going to be what type of housing? Um, Village be, housing, smaller, smaller lot sizes. Smaller lot sizes, but right, right now I believe that, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that area at one point was a junkyard. And it's been cleaned up. And it yeah, just it makes more sense. It was. On the planning end of, wise. On the end of Pembroke, yeah. Yeah. It <coughs> just makes more sense planning wise. And 
so so by doing this potentially it could increase the, uh, the tax, tax revenue, revenue for the town yep yeah mm -hmm. so it makes sense um, 10 more property and taxes you know houses. you want zo zoning zones to be somewhat uh, straight lined or regular line you don't want a bunch or a whole bunch of jogging lines because it then very much looks like spot zoning I'll make a motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on Article 27? This is no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Article 27 passes unanimously. Oh, wait, that one, was that Article? Uh, no, I think that was 27. Yeah, that's 27. That is 27. Okay. Yeah. This As I said, when I tried to put the map in, it covered the verbiage. Oh, okay, all right. Gotcha. <laughs> Yep. So I gave it the way I got it from okay. him. Yep. Article 28, uh, rather than <coughs> try to print out the verbiage, I just took it as it was given to me. This is an update of the stormwater management bylaw. It comes from the stormwater agent and the conservation, I guess the conservation committee and the town planner. They're asking that this update incorporates some of the changes, I guess, uh, from the statutes, and they ask that it be put forward. So it puts and they will put an explanation together to present to town meeting. <coughs> I just told them if it's a PowerPoint, I'm going to shoot them. Yes. <laughs> so does this, by changing this, does it help with like compliance of? It it, it it helps with the whole regulation okay. of the stormwater. Yeah, and it, it helps us it helps us comply with them as for. That's that's what I figured that was going. I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second on Article twenty eight. Any further discussion? Seeing there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's Article twenty eight passage unanimously. Article 29 is a citizen's petition. The, si the signatures have been certified. What page is that? Because it's uh, it doesn't have a page. It was at the very end yeah, of. It's, it's the very end. The very end of the stormwater uh, article. Yeah, there's 15 pages, pages of that. Right yeah. All right. Have you been reading every page? That's <laughs> <laughs> trying to speed read through there. Evelyn Wood. <laughs> So, uh, all right, so Article 29. Citizen petition. Citizen, uh, the signatures have been certified. So, it's just uh, a change proposed by a certain group of citizens to the soil conservation uh, bylaw, etc. It's going to be brought up on the floor and discussed, right? Uh, I've asked for uh, analysis <laughs> from the various departments, but it has to go forward as it is. I mean, I don't know what we vote. So on. I don't. Yeah. So I don't, maybe this one we won't even take off because, because it's a citizen's yeah, petition. I mean, we're going to get information presented to us. And we and we've sent it to town council to make sure that even though it's a citizen's petition, and we might have to vote on it, that town council will advise us if it's even legal. So then we'll oh. just, so we'll table this okay. up. I'm just looking at something that's here in purple under F, FG oh. straight through. They want any earth removal that's done within 2,000 feet of it being done restricted. So really, almost a half a mile away, and somebody's going to be able to tell you what you can do on your property. It's oh, are, you well, where, are you reading where it says a butter? Mm -hmm. A yeah. butter is any property with 2,000 feet. Uh, I think we all know where this article is going. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's a citizen's petition. It's their right to present it to town meeting. Yeah. I'll make a motion to table it. I, I don't think you need to table it. I think you probably it would be better to uh, take a vote to take no position on it. I'll okay. make a motion and take no position on it. Second. 
Any further discussion? We'll have a position. This is no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's your word. All right. How many trees are we good? All right. So the uh, why don't we just why don't we take up the minutes right now that we have to uh, hold on. So we have two two sets of minutes. Um, one from March second. Uh, in attendance was myself, Pete Benoit, Eric Chu, Sue Delgado, Bob Ferreira, and Eric McGlynn. Make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any of those minutes are accepted. And the next set is from March 9th. In attendance was myself, Pete Benoit, Eric Chu, Sue Delgado, Bob Ferreira, and Eric McGlynn. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, those minutes are accepted. Uh, okay, so next on the agenda would be old business. If anybody has any old business to bring up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank the committee. It's been uh, a pleasure to work with such a professional group. Thank you. Likewise. 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 Likewise.
Um, I want to raise. <laughs> you got a w so, and that could, that goes for a lot of committees in town. Uh, you know, there are various committees that may be looking for for folks uh, to volunteer their time. Um, so this is a good way to participate in your town government mm -hmm. and know what's know what's going on, know where your dollars are being spent. And our goal here is to continue to provide uh, a responsible budget uh, with no, no not irresponsible spending. Um, you know, as long as I've been sitting on this board, we've never um, had to ask for an override uh, from the residents to, to fund our operating budget. Um, and I hope we never have to do that. If we ever get to that point, then there's a, there's a serious problem uh, with spending going on. Uh, and if something ever like that happens, then there's gonna be some major cuts that would have to take place. So um, it's the 16 years I've been here, I've never seen us go through that. And I don't see us going through that with the current um, sense of direction that we have uh, set, set in place right now. So I think we were potentially going to be in a good spot for the next few years. Congratulations to a new fire chief, too. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. Yeah, congratulations to our new fire chief, uh, I think Mr. Thomas Farlin. Mm -hmm. um, look forward to working with him. And uh, also, I mean, it's bittersweet to see Chief Gallagher go because he's been great for our town. Been awesome. But he, you know, he deserves his retirement too. So, oh, Pip. There we go. <laughs> we can, we can, ref well, you know, we can refer to Chief Gallagher as the goat of the chiefs, of uh, fire chiefs. It's true. You know? Chief so Emeritus. Chief, so, Chief, if you're watching, you're the goat of uh, fire chiefs. <laughs> uh, if there's no further business, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.